Well, we have more breaking news on the swine flu outbreak. We have just received word from the newsroom. Norma, I know you just got back from Mexico about two weeks ago. Was there any sign of the outbreak at that point? No sign of the outbreak at all, Brian. In fact, I arrived to Mexico City by air, and then I took a bus ride about a five-hour ride to southern Mexico. Things were very normal. In fact, we all know that five days ago when the first cases, news of the first cases broke, all of that changed the face of Mexico City and thus the face of Mexico. Nearly 50 bodies mutilated and left outside Monterey, not far from the U.S. border. Telemundo's Norma Garcia joins us now. So, Norma, is this the work of the drug cartels? Brian, according to Mexican authorities, yes, George Domeni, the spokesperson with the state of Nuevo León, said this, and I quote, this continues to be a manifestation of violence among gangs. It is not an attack against the regular population. And they are really driving this point across, Brian, perhaps in an effort to avoid massive panic. I also want to point out that the Ceras cartel uh, claimed these killings today. So, Norma, you say that uh, these are not attacks against regular people. So who are the victims? Well, according to the state's attorney general, they could be immigrants from Central or South America. And they believe this could be the case because they have looked and they have found no reports of uh, missing persons in the state of Nuevo Leon. What we know so far is that the bodies of 43 men and six women were dumped along this road that is about 110 miles from the border. Forensic evidence shows so far that they were probably killed somewhere else and just dumped in this road. The bodies are in very bad shape, so it's probably going to be a while before they can be identified. Norman, the numbers here are absolutely staggering. What we're talking about, like 50,000 people killed since the drug war began. And probably even more, Brian, nobody exactly knows, but it is uh, way up there. And of course, this number involves not just drug dealers that have been killed, but innocent people as well. Many Mexican soldiers and police officers as well. Yeah. And of course, Norma, for a lot of us here in Texas and in this country, we're wondering about travel. Is it safe to travel to Mexico? What are the experts saying about that? Well, it depends where you go. And uh, Nuevo Leon is included in the warning from the State Department that was issued on February 8th. It advises people to defer all non-essential travel to the state of Nuevo Leon, except for the city of Monterrey, where they, ex they ask people to exercise caution but probably the best advice to anybody that's planning to travel to Mexico is to exercise common sense everywhere you go, just the way you would when you travel to any other country in the world. Norma Garcia from our sister station, Telemundo. Thanks for your insight, Norma. We appreciate it. My pleasure. This is one of the main newspapers in Mexico City, and in two words, it pretty much captures the essence of the day. Let's vote, it says. 79 million Mexicans will elect a new president today in what will be the biggest test for Mexican democracy. At stake, 500 congressional seats, the equivalent to the House of Representatives, and 128 Senate seats. There are several issues that play a role in this election, for example, unemployment and education, but none of them more important than violence. 50,000 lives have been lost in the war between the government and the drug cartels in the last six years. The National Action Party, or PAN, has been in power for 12 years, and if the polls are correct, that party will be no longer in power after today. But the leading candidate represents a party that held on to power for 71 years. It is the Institutional Revolutionary Party, or PRI, notorious for voter fraud and corruption. There is a third party that has been picking up support. The leftist candidate, very popular among students, but also a very polarizing figure in this country. The polls close in about one hour, and the results could be known before midnight. We'll keep you posted. In Mexico City, I'm Norma Garcia. Back to you. Good evening. He was the first U.S. elected official to visit Cuba in 40 years since Fidel Castro took power. That was in 1999. Two years later, Governor George Ryan returned to Cuba in an effort to build a bridge of goodwill and maybe an opportunity for business with the state of Illinois. With a visit to the Children's Hospital, Governor George Ryan ended a three-day trip to Cuba today. He leaves the island hoping that Illinois will become the first state to sell pharmaceuticals to Cuba in 42 years. For Catholics around the world, the rosary is a prayer. But for residents of a small town in Mexico, the rosary is a lifestyle. Today in our special segment, Portraits of Mexico, we take you to Yurecuaro, Michoacán. 
You can find them everywhere outside the Basilica in Mexico City. Every single one is as unique as the hands that craft it. Tyrone Williams is accused of ignoring the pleas of at least 75 undocumented immigrants who were packed into his trailer to be taken to Houston. 19 of them died in what has been called the worst human smuggling tragedy in the U.S. If convicted, he could face the death penalty. The new resolution will allow Mexicans in the U.S. to participate in the next presidential elections to be held in their country next year. But many questions still remain. Mexico has yet to acquire the technology to make sure the vote of its citizens living abroad really counts. We are at the Bodega de Santo Tomas. This is the oldest winery in Ensenada. Some of the very best wines in Mexico are produced here in this warehouse where people from all over the world come every day for a good time and some really, really good wine.